What do you mean there's a new version of me? Uh, I don't know what to tell you, bud. I, I'm sorry. There's there's a new version of you coming out. But how can that be? I'm I'm nearly perfect. Do, do you have him? Bring him. I want to see him. Hey there. It's me. The newer, better version of you. No. No, that's not true. That's impossible! How's it going everyone? Deceptibot9 here. Thank you as always for joining me here on the channel. Uh, I'm trying a little different style for the opener, the little comedy sketch. Uh, if you liked it, let me know. Uh, even if you didn't like it as well, let me know down below. Guys, if you can't tell today, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Transformer Studio Series Gamer Edition number 03, Optimus Prime. Now before we get to the review, guys, I'd like to ask if you like what you see, go ahead and leave me a like. Plus, if you are not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe as well. It does really truly mean a lot to me. Plus, if you want to find me anywhere else on the internet, all of my social links are in the description down below. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and drop it down to the review station and take a closer look at Gamer Edition Optimus Prime. All right, and here he is in his full glory, uh, without any of his accessories or anything, just standing tall, standing proud. It is Gamer Edition Optimus Prime. Now, I was very excited when they announced that we were going to be getting these, uh, or at least some, of these High Moon designs of figures in the Studio Series line because I have a huge fondness for these games. The original one came out right after Revenge of the Fallen, so I was the perfect age for a Transformers video game to be coming out at that time, and I fell in love with War for Cybertron, and then I absolutely adored Fall of Cybertron as well. Uh, it was one of the first games I've ever only pre-ordered still to this day. I don't pre-order many video games all that often, but I had to get Fall of Cybertron when it was coming out. So I have a huge attachment to these games and these character designs. They're some of my favorite character designs in the entire franchise. And even though the original 2010 mold of this guy is great, we will take a look at, you know, those this guy versus that guy here in a little bit. Um, I was super excited to be getting newer versions of these figures. Optimus Prime is a great design. Uh, I never had the original Bumblebee, so I'm looking forward to the Bumblebee. Of course, Barricade never got a figure. Um, so I'm just super excited to see where this line can go. So as you've seen him here in his full glory, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the details on this guy. All right, coming in here close, we'll take a look at the head sculpt. Head sculpt itself is terrific, although... Um, I've seen people point out that maybe they think it's a little bit too small, and I can kind of see that. It is a little on the smaller side, but I feel like it fits with his game model very, very well. Um, but the head sculpt itself is awesome. We got the light blue eyes coming through, uh, the silver on the crest, and of course the faceplate. Plus, if we can get in closer, there is a bunch of little details in there. The lines on his faceplate, the, you know, the little spots next to it all the way around to the side here with the ears too everything looks really nice there moving down of course we get his beautiful chest window here um the nice red color with the silver paint i do wish that the red was a little bit of a shinier red like we see on his product shots on the back of the box um he's a little bit glossier and shinier i do wish he had that color going on but the color it came out is nice in and of itself so it's no big deal um moving down here a little bit of paint on the under chest and this nice little silver spot right here moving down you can see a lot of gray plastic nice molded detail everywhere on him though he does look pretty terrific we got the little paint orange spots there on the waist moving uh over to the shoulders we get the tampa graph autobot symbol there on the shoulders as well as all the detail same thing right here i love how much detail is in the arms right there looks really really great of course the fists are done in a blue coming down to the legs we can see just all the nice detail there even up here a uh, little extra detail molded into that spot on the legs and here of course moving down we get the little silver on the inside for his shins with his kneecaps and all the other detail going on around there and of course his little feet moving off into the side you know 
detail on the side of his arms. You can see the back. He's got his wheels sticking out where they should be as per the game. Uh, unfortunately, there is no Autobot face going on here on the back. But that's okay. I can live with that because, honestly, the kibble management back here is pretty solid. It's not really that much of a pain or in the way. Although I do wish they had found a way to kind of fold that bumper up so it wasn't sticking out to the sides all that much. Not a huge deal, though. Not a deal breaker. And, of course, we get the wheels on the back where they should be as per the game. While we're looking at detail, I do want to show off. You can also open up his chest and... In there is his matrix. Plus, there is a lot of detail in here. If you take the matrix out whoop, and throw it across your table, um, there is so much molded detail and paintwork going on in here. It is really, really cool. And the matrix itself, um, to segue into our accessory section, matrix itself is nice. It's not terrible. Um, you know, it's just a standard looking matrix. It's got gold and it's got the blue on the inside with the handles on the side. And the back is just flat and a peg hole. Um, there's no real way for him to hold it, though. Let's move the camera down. No real way for him to hold it. His hands don't open up or anything. Um, like Earthrise Prime. Oh, come and killed him on his own review. Dang. But even then, Earthrise Prime can barely hold that one, too. So... Not much to do with the Matrix besides lock it into its little chest cavity and leave it there. But again, it is a really nice feature. I am glad they included that. That's something that the original does not have. So if we close that up, we'll go ahead and talk about his other two accessories. One of which is his cannon. His I don't remember which one this is in the game, if this one even has a name in the game. I think it's just the Heavy Cannon, Heavy Blaster. It is done in all black. It would have been nice if they had some additional paint on here, but I understand why if they're going to leave it all black, because if you don't know by now, the functionality of the weapon here, as you can see, there's no pegs or anything for him to hold. What you do is you just yoink off his arm. It's on a five millimeter port and a five millimeter port there with the little hole and you slap in the cannon on his arm to replicate the way that it would transform out of the character's arms in the games. And I freaking love this. I love that they incorporated this into the figures, um, and you'll be able to swap them out with any of the other War for Cybertron figures that come out in the Studio Series line because that's what happens in the game. You pick up different weapons, and they're all transforming their arms. And, you know, so it's going to be really cool to build up a huge collection of weapons, preferably all the ones from the game, uh, to be able to use on any of your characters. Obviously, this one fits Optimus very well because it's big and it's bulky, uh, just like his Ion Blaster would. And you see it sort of, it, just, it, it flows very, very well. I'm really happy with how this accessory turned out. The only thing with it, though, is there is no uh, inherent weapon storage on the figure. Uh, you can kind of lift that up and hold. Nope, you can't really even hold it in there. You can hold it in there like that if you want. Uh, it's not official in any way. There is no weapon storage because, of course, he wouldn't store this weapon on him uh, when he's not using it because it just transforms in his body. But there is... And I've talked about this before, how I just hate when figures do this uh, for storage. There is a peg on his arm, and you can just slap it into the back of his ass. Um, but then it sticks out on the butt. Like, at, this, at that point, don't even include the weapon storage or the alternate hand storage because why even bother? It's just sitting there. It's so weird. Anyway, enough about the storage of the hand going in the ass. Don't need to talk about that. The other accessory that I am really happy they finally included is his nice axe. His axe is really, really cool. It is large. You can see it's about the same size as him, which is awesome. The one downside of the axe is the paintwork here on the blade. Um, I wish they had done it a little bit better. Like, it just looks like a dry brush that fades uh, into the gray and not like energy like it's supposed to be right this is like these blades are energy blades coming out transforming out of the staff part of it um so yeah it's not the greatest looking in terms of paint work I and mean, i get what they were going for but it could have been improved slightly but that does not change the fact that it looks incredible uh of course you know it's got pegs or not pegs but it's got 
It's big enough to be a five millimeter, so you can just slide it, of course, into the hand like that um, and make it look like he is holding it down there close to the bottom. You can make him raise it up, give it a little war salute with it there as well. Um, but the other thing you can do is it comes apart. So it splits into uh, a couple different pieces. You can take the head off as well if you want, but I usually leave it on. Split it into two pieces. So if you wanted to slide this side into the hand like that, and this side down underneath it, make it look like he's gripping it up a little bit higher, you certainly can do that. And I actually love that effect on him as well. Or even uh, sometimes what you can do is if you take the gun off, put the hand back on, if you fiddle with it just right, you can get him to grip it in both hands, giving a nice big slash um, with the dual hand. So he's got enough posability to do the dual hand. And we'll talk about that here in a second. But the other thing that this axe can do that I really, really like uh, when they showed it off was at the front part here, you see a little crease. It splits, splits open, and it can form the double large part of the axe. Now, the downside to this, as much as I love this gimmick, the downside is if you spin it the other way, um, the other, you know, the, the halberd side of the axe just kind of sitting there and it's not the greatest look. So if you're going to use the double sided axe, I'd recommend leaving it you know, like that so it actually emulates the look that you're going for. But I love that they added the functionality of that because I love being able to swap the axe between um, both modes like that. And again, he looks fantastic with it. He looks really, really cool. Uh, he's big and bulky and the axe fits just perfectly with this character design, in my opinion. It's such an iconic weapon of Prime and of this Prime specifically that makes me really happy they included his big axe. And just like the gun, there is no inherent weapon storage on this. I mean, he does have some five millimeter ports on the inside of his arm that if you wanted to use that side port for, you can't even. <laughs> I didn't realize that wasn't thick enough, but we'll go ahead and set that off to the side for now so we can look at the posability. He's, he's so much fun to pose. I cannot stop messing around with this guy um, because he's just so much fun to pose around. The head here is on a ball joint, rocks all the way around, uh, goes up that far, which is great, goes down not that much, but of course you can spin it all the way around and rock it side to side. So, so much movement out of that head. Arms swivels all the way around. They go out uh, up that far, which is great. They do swivel at the bicep here as well. Bend at the elbow a little bit more than 90, which is great to see. Wrist swivel here, even though it is slightly blocked by the red. Swivel there. Um, one thing you can do, it's not really an articulation point, um, but due to transformation, how he transforms, he can have a slight butterfly joint. Uh, you have to pull this piece out a little bit to be able to get it like all the way or even part of the way. Um, but if you need to use a butterfly joint, you certainly can get him to do that, which is really nice. You just got to kind of transform it a little bit. Waist here swivels all the way around. Legs go forward this far. Ooh, they go all the way up like that. Great kick. They go back. Um, apparently they don't go back. I thought they did, uh, but they just stopped there. So they don't really go back at all. Uh, they do go out all the way to the side splits. He can go full split, which is incredible. We love that for Optimus. Leg swivel here all the way right there. And a knee joint that goes to about 90. Feet uh, are on the ankle pivot, and they can kind of go down a little bit just like that. All right. There is the articulation on Prime. Let's look at some comparisons. All right. Here is the new... Uh, gamer edition. Let's put his legs a little bit closer together. There we go. Uh, new gamer edition Optimus Prime with the original 2010 Generations mold. Uh, this is the version that came, uh, I think it was an Amazon two pack with uh, Orion packs, which is a repaint of Cup. Um, but this is a fantastic mold, man. I absolutely love the hell out of this mold and this figure. Uh, there are some, you know, differences from the original in-game model. Obviously, he's not as big and not as bulky, which this one does emulate very well. Honestly, these are both 
great toys. Uh, I can't complain with either one, really, to be completely honest with you. And if you told me you weren't going to get Gamer Edition because you have this one already, that's probably okay. Uh, or if you're getting Gamer Edition because you don't have this one, you know, that's cool too. Uh, but I think they're both different enough that if you want to have both, you can. I mean, that's what I'm doing. Um, because this one is great. I will never stop loving this one. He looks, he's fun in robot mode. Vehicle mode's awesome. Um, transformation's really, really involved and intricate on this one which can be a little frustrating at times and this one beats it in transformation for sure it's a lot more fun a lot more straightforward and simple um but yeah this one just rocks overall too so but he is on the smaller side so it's really up to you here he is with the original uh generations war for cybertron megatron figure you can definitely see megatron needs an update as well but honestly i don't know if he's a big deluxe or he's just kind of a short voyager uh but they're about the same size, but I still always think Megatron should be a little bit bigger than Prime. Uh, but we'll have to see when the Gamer Edition Megatron comes out. Very much looking forward to that. And I do not have a War for Cybertron Bumblebee, either the original mold or the new Studio Series one yet. So here is Gamer Prime with his little buddy Earthrise Bumblebee. All right, enough about the robot mode on Prime. Let's get to that transformation. Transformation on Studio Series Gamer Prime here is a lot of fun. I love the way this chest piece explodes out, rotates around, uh, and then kind of folds back down. I think it's really, really fun. And it's a, it's a lot more simple and straightforward than the original Generations mold, which I do appreciate, and it is so much fun to flip around. And I love what happens here with the legs, especially in comparison to the 2010 version because those were so complicated to switch, you know, flip around and tab in different places and ways. But these ones are very simple. They tab together, they fold out, and kind of rotate pieces around. The shins become the top part. The wheels come out. It's very, very simple, straightforward, but also very fun uh, and a new, you know, transformation type for this guy. And everything locks together, holds solidly together at the very end. It's a great, fun transformation. All right, and here is Gamer Edition Prime transformed up into his big old armored truck mode. And I gotta say, for the most part, I really like it. I think it's really, really great. He is big. He is he is huge in this mode, guys. He is so, so big. Um, there are a couple things about the mode that do bug me overall, but they don't really stop me from loving how much fun this guy is let's check out the details on the vehicle mode all right coming up here first we've got the front section here with its little grill it's got the bumper nice silver pieces here on the side this was all on the back so we didn't really see much of it uh we got the chest on the inside forming the front windows and this is one part that slightly bugs me it's like if you look at it from the side like these are supposed to be all like one window piece um, for the most part, but they don't really line up. The silver goes a little bit higher than the red on this part. It doesn't, it's not like huge. And if you look at it from the front, like it's, eh, it's not that bad. Um, but since they're supposed to be one piece, that does slightly bug me ever so slightly. But I think it's just a cool look anyway that I, I can overlook that part. Uh, we can see up here, he's got a little bit of detail right there on the top. Otherwise, not a lot. There's, you know, panel lining uh, everywhere on the front of him here. We got his wheels, which look nice. He got the nice big treads with the little uh, red circle on the inside and the silver lining in the middle here. The red fading into the blue with, of course, the big exhaust pipes coming out. Not a lot of detail on this mode, just, you know, a lot of panel lining and a lot of nice smooth lookingness uh up on the top here you can see a little bit of detail from the legs here obviously are the feet the bottom of the feet the smaller wheels uh as well just like the big wheels look exactly the same and they're great uh and then of course yes we do have to talk about the back unfortunately the the hands are just exposed uh i do wish they would have been able to cover it somehow but it doesn't really bother me as much as it bothers some other people and again the rest of this figure is so solid and great that i can overlook the fact that they couldn't incorporate something to cover the hands do i wish they had of course yes obviously um but the rest of it and if you look at it straight on from the side you can't see it only when you start tilting it this way and you start to see it a little bit and then more but you know not a big issue and we'll look at him from the bottom honestly not a lot of robot kibble on the bottom just his arms are kind of hanging out here uh you can see of course what is his waist and of course his chest there but nothing really there going on 
and we got to test the roll. So yeah, that's a pretty solid roll overall. He can roll around and decimate his victims or what have you. Now, unlike the robot mode, the vehicle mode does actually have weapon storage. So if you notice here, there's these two tabs on the bottom of his feet and on the ion blaster, there's these two tabs right there. You just slot the gun into the back. He's got, I guess, a turret coming up. Oh, I didn't mention on the, uh, when we were talking about the robot mode, but this little piece sticking out here is, I believe, blast effect compatible. If you want to put the blast effects on the gun, you can do that. I do not have any uh, handy to me right now, unfortunately, but yes, you can put some blast effects. And uh, to double up the weapon storage, there's these two little slots on the bottom of the axe, which will just go onto these tabs on the top of the gun. So... Yeah, I mean, not the best. I mean, at least there is some weapon storage on, like, robot mode. But, yeah, you can deal with that if you want. Let's check out some comparisons, shall we? All right, we'll bring in the original 2010 mold. And you can see the drastic difference in size with these two. And this is what I'm talking about. This thing is a monster, especially compared to this old one. Uh, you can really kind of see... The similarities and differences, obviously it's the same vehicle, there's just a lot more, there's a lot more, you know, big panel spacing here on this one, obviously, because there's a lot, it's a much more complex transformation, um, which, yeah, <laughs> it, it, I like how complex it is and how unique it is, uh, but it would have definitely benefited from being on a bigger figure, because it can be a little bit hard to do sometimes at this tiny point, but I'm glad that this one smoothed it up. Uh, made it a lot more streamlined and this one is so much fun to flip back and forth and here he is with Megatron despite them being you know fairly the same height in robot mode you can see that vehicle mode Megatron is sorely sorely lacking uh, so it's definitely needed a, a proper update for Megatron to go with this prime I think this prime or this Megatron fits with the other prime fairly well but not with this one. And last, of course, here he is with Earth, <laughs> Earthrise Bumblebee, who he just absolutely dwarfs. You can see that his, uh, yeah, Prime is huge compared to this Bumblebee, but I cannot wait to get Gamer Bumblebee uh, to go with this Prime. Uh, of course, when I get him, I'll take a look at him. All right, and that's going to be it for my closer look at Studio Series Gamer Edition Optimus Prime. So let's go ahead and charge on back up to me for my final thoughts. All right, so my final thoughts on Gamer Prime. Well, they're spelled out pretty well throughout the review, but I think he's awesome. I think he's a great start to the Gamer Edition subline. He is super, super awesome in robot mode, super posable, super detailed, super fun. I love the accessories. Transformation is super smooth, super fun to go back and forth. Vehicle mode is an absolute beast. It's a huge old tank of a, of a Cybertronian truck. With a couple minor gripes like the fist being visible and the way the windows line up, totally overlooked by the rest of the actual figure because he's so much fun. Again, if you have the 2010 mold um, and you enjoy that enough, I don't know that you need to grab this one unless you absolutely want it like me. Uh, big fan of the games here, of course. Um, if you don't have the 2010 mold, grab this figure because he is an absolute blast. He's so fun. He's much more accurate to the game than the original mold. But the original mold is a lot of fun too, and I understand if you don't want to upgrade or replace that one. All right, guys, that's going to do it for my full closer look at Transformers Studio Series Voyager Class Gamer Edition Optimus Prime. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts on the Gamer Edition Prime down below. I'm really looking forward to the rest of the subline. My barricade should be arriving within the next week, and I'm going to order Bumblebee whenever he pops up uh, in stock somewhere. I love the designs, I love the games, and I can't wait for these figures, but you let me know your thoughts on them down below. And with that said, guys, I've been your host, Decepticon9. Thank you, as always, for joining me here on the channel, and I will see you all later.